introduction. Uh, I would first of all like to express my sincere thanks to uh, Professor Kim Sung Hong for the invitation to this renowned institute. Uh, before I came here, I had looked at uh, Wikipedia to see well, what kind of city of Taizhou is, and uh, it, it describes it as a city of full of science and technology. But to my present surprise, I found it's surrounded by beautiful nature. And so far, I have enjoyed walking around the bank side of the river. It's a v very well prepared, you mean in very one nice. Month? Yeah, you mean in one month to enjoy all of them. So I'm just wondering why people are flowing together to the uh, congested soil instead of Tejum. <laughs> Tejum is a good place for living and for studying. <laughs> so far, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about uh, a very different topic about uh, big mass data. You know, statisticians start to think about uh, their mathematical models from data, but the mathematicians hate data. And uh, this is a big picture. I, first of all, uh, warn you that do not look at uh, the details of the slides because it will, uh, you probably will face the danger of looking at the big picture. Although I have prepared each of the slides very carefully myself to try to convey a message about what kind of data uh, we are talking about. You probably will find very little information if you try to Google this uh, keyword uh, because it's, uh, it's created by now a small community. Uh, these are two guys in my department. They are computer scientists. Uh, Professor Hagiwara is a specialist on coding theory and uh, Professor Yamamoto uh, is a specialist on security of computer programs. Okay, uh, well, I do give a popular definition about big uh, data. It's described as a three, three V, uh, big, uh, three high, uh, H, a high, uh, high volume, high velocity, and high variety. I don't know, I don't know why, why this definition is getting so popular. I, to be honest, I'm personally not interested in this kind of uh, uh, the data of this kind of uh, uh, described by, by this community, but it looks very popular and seems even to be standard. So they describe it as a 3V. <coughs> well, you, you, do, you, you can find these kind of pictures from, from the internet. I did not create it by myself. But today I would like to talk about a special kind of data which arise from doing mathematics. This is uh, not a mass data, this is a mass picture. We, uh, the teachers or the students uh, write on the blackboards. I give a very uh, narrow definition about mass data, uh, mass, big mass data. I describe it as a phenomenon occurring in the big data landscape, I just show you, uh, which is of course not popular, uh, you know. All, everyone talks about uh, big data even on popular TV programs. Uh, this is s certainly ignored part of the uh, big mass community, uh, ma massive uh, community. Uh, I describe the big mass, define big mass data as uh, phenomena which encompasses all computer verified theories of mathematical sciences. Uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, in the time to follow is trying to uh, describe what do I mean by computer verified theories and uh, much more. So I will try to turn to digitize this picture. How can I digitize this picture? by writing LaTeX codes? Yes or no? Well, uh, this is a 
uh, content, this is the line I'm trying to follow. First, I will talk about how to formalize mathematical sciences. Then I talk about several aspects of big mass data. And my interest, so I'm, I myself is a statistician, I certainly would like to emphasize uh, I'm interested in these kinds of uh, uh, fields. First, uh, how to uh, do statistic analysis by using mathematical, uh, using the data ob obtained from mathematical sciences. And second, how to formalize statistical sciences. Statistical science is a huge science. And I'm, my person, no personal interest is on causal inference. How to formalize uh, statistical uh, an algebra to statistical causal inference. And finally, uh, mathematicians hate statisticians partly because we do a lot of simulation studies and the data analysis. No one believes the results about the data analysis and everyone doubts about simulation studies and it's come I mean, about, uh, uh, the reality is we can prove that the simulation results are valid, but how to do it? Uh, I just uh, gave some very vague ideas about how to uh, do uh, statistical simulations in a mathematically rigorous way. Uh, this is the advertisement, I won't talk about that. Uh, I do spend some energy about uh, a, a very simple, f how to prove a very simple formula uh, known as Gauss's formula. Uh, I say it, uh, I hope you won't look into the details too much, but I do wish y you can understand the following several slides. Uh, this uh, will talk, uh, will uh, tell you about how to formalize mathematical theories uh, by by computer. Okay, so I will take uh, take um, uh, several very simple examples. We learned about uh, a formula of this kind. We don't r r write the formula in this way. We learn in high schools. Uh, We, we usually write it in this way. Uh, Gauss is supposed to, uh, to, to learn to prove this theorem when he is five or seven years old. Uh, his proof looks like this. Okay, uh, by commutativity of, uh, uh, of, of the uh, addition among natural numbers, so you can rearrange the the summation in any way you like and we rearrange it in such a special way then by adding each equation the left hand side and the right hand side then you will immediately get the result you want this is a human being proof what is a proof? a proof is a communication <coughs> between a speaker and audience uh, based on the knowledge the audience have, I convey you a statement is true. After some explanation, you accept what I said. Then the theorem is proved. When I publish it in a journal, it will be my, uh, my theorem. This is Gauss's formula. Okay, this, we call this kind of proof is an informal pro proof. You probably will be very much surprised. This is a, f a proof, very rigorous proof, but you will see later, this is informal. We have uh, other proofs of the same fact. Uh, for instance, Gauss's formula is uh, good, but uh, it's difficult to generalize uh, based on this expansion. Okay, we know expansion when we learn it in uh, high school. Based on this expansion, we can do things similar to what Gauss did, but in a totally different style. Okay, we insert each natural number uh, from uh, from uh, one 
to n. And by adding the left hand side and the right, right hand side and canceling intermediate terms, then well, you will immediately get the same result. This is also an informal proof in the sense I'm going to talk about the later. Okay? But th this proof can be generalized so that we can uh, prove to get a formula about the summation of the square of the natural numbers or qubit. This is a very general proof. Uh, this, is, this is a formal proof of Gauss the formula in a language called the SS reflect. I, I, I suppose this is a not a popular uh, software. This software is created by a French institute, a very renowned uh, fr French institute called INRI in Paris. And spread out, uh, uh, spread out in France. Uh, I unfortunately I'm not being able to explain the detail about this proof. I will give a very simple proof, uh, a proof about another simple uh, mathematical fact. Uh, this is a computer checked proof. Okay, we accept this this proof. This so this theorem is is a valid theorem. Rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. Okay. What, what, what are, what are these fancy, fancy things? These are even more basic mathematical facts used in proving these, these kind of things. Okay. I will uh, use another simple example to illustrate it. I will spend some time to prove this theorem. This is a little bit too difficult. I prove this theorem formally, okay? Uh, this theorem says that for each, for every natural number, n plus the addition of the natural number from the left to uh, zero will return the same natural number. Does anyone in this room uh, reject <laughs> about this theorem? It is a theorem. We believe it. It's, you, you will see it's obvious. What do you mean by obvious? Obvious uh, means different things to different people. If you have a, a, a kid about three years old, you tell it. Will you, your kid say it's obvious? No. If he says, or if he or she says it's obvious, then you, you should send him to he or her to university. Okay, uh, this theorem written by SS Reflect is uh, uh, li uh, like this. I will give you a demonstration because I can prove it uh, in about five minutes. But before proving it, I will just tell you a little bit uh, the background knowledge about how to prove it. In order for a computer which knows nothing about, uh, uh, knows nothing except those things you import to tell the computer, okay? You need to tell the computer what do you mean by natural number, okay? What do you mean by the, the, the symbol plus? What do you mean by the symbol zero? What do you mean by the symbol equal? You all, you have to tell the computer everything. And I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going able to tell about the equality. Equality is the most difficult thing. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk, uh, tell you about two basic things. One is a natural number. The other is uh, addition of a natural. What do we define addition? A natural number, we call it net which is inductively defined as a set. How to define a set in SS Reflect? A set composed, uh, consists of two things. 
One is a symbol, we we'll, we'll call it a large O, which is a net. So we define net by recording the net we are going to define. This is the essence of this software. And the essence of the new mathematical discipline called uh, type theory. Okay? We, we are talking about, we are going to define net, but in the definition we are referring to the net. The net is a set in which it consists of uh, something. We, you, we use the la, 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 large O. And another thing, S. S is a function from net to net. So it's a unitary uh, function. Uh, it's, a, it's a function. You take a natural number, then the function will guarantee to give another natural number. In this way, you will be guaranteed to have an infinite number of natural numbers. Okay? This is a big advance in mathematical science. Please recall what we learned about set when we were in high schools or probably in the first or second year of in universities. What is a set? Set were very informally defined. There are ma many troubles. Those definitions we learned in schools uh, so far are not suitable for computers. This, is a, this, this definition uh, <coughs> is uh, particularly suited for, for com computer programs. Okay. Uh, later, we, we will replace the large O by the, by the symbol O, uh, by symbol zero. Okay? You, can, you, you can replace the large O by zero. Okay? So, in this way, we define natural numbers. Uh, so, Japan is not as important as natural numbers, so we are here. <laughs> Natural number is a starting point of mathematics. Please remember, this natural number is the most important thing to start mathematical sciences. So we have uh, have uh, have a starting element. Then from the starting element, we have uh, we have uh, another natural number. From this natural number, we have another natural number. Then we will have another uh, a natural number. So this defines, this one, one line code defines an infinite, infinite set. Very surprising. I try to uh, understand this, this line uh, several weeks. I, I, later I convinced myself. This is a beautiful definition. Inductive is a definition. In inductively define something. Okay. Then we have to define plus. Uh, natural numbers are defined. Okay. Uh, then we have to def define about addition of two natural numbers. Uh, addition of uh, natural numbers is a binary operator. You import two things called uh, M and N. Uh, okay. And w of course, we will usually write uh, m plus m. How to how 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 to define this one? Okay, we do uh, do do the definition as follows. We match the we match the left. Uh, uh, n, sorry, n, n, m. Order matters a lot to computer. Computer does not know the, uh, the commutative rule or associative rule. You need to tell him. Okay, if n, uh, if we match, we match n, the left, the left element, the summons, uh, if n uh, is zero, is a starting element of your set, then it will return the right summoned. So 
the definition says uh, zero plus anything will give you the same thing. So this says that uh, zero is a left uh, unit in the algebra you are going to define. The second line says that if n is a successor of something p, so it's either zero or the successor of something. Okay. So if uh, n is a successor of p, this is p. So if uh, n is a successor of p, so if if it is a successor of p, then the second line says uh, this should give you the successor of p plus m. The end the addition is defined, well defined. Okay? So we define plus by referring to plus. This will terminate because we have a starting point. If p is not zero, then to calculate p plus m, then it will refer to this definition again. And finally, it will terminate because the chain, this is a, a, descending, a, a descending chain with a row bound zero. So we, in computer, everything has to be exact. We defined a set, zero, a set natural number, net, and we defined a plus as the addition of the natural numbers. Of course, in this will exactly mean the things we learned and we understand mathematics. So we can prove this theorem with this knowledge, except the equality. Equality is very, very tricky. And I will do a little bit demonstration. This is a software called Coke. Okay, uh, theorem. This is a, a computer way of writing the theorem uh, for, a, for all natural number uh, n plus zero equals, equals n. This is, uh, by the way, this theorem is not uh, self-evident by, by this definition. Okay. How do, this is the uh, input of human being. This is the output of the compute. One over one means you have one sub-goal among the goal you are going to prove. Uh, okay, we, we will prove it. Move n. This is called bookkeeping. We move, n is assumption. n is a natural number. We move the assumption, uh, we separate assumptions from the, from the goal. Okay, the assumption that belongs the line, this is a goal, remain to prove. How do we prove it? We, do, we prove it by mathematical induction. Elim uh, n, elim. N is uh, called a ta tactic. Okay, let's recall mathematical induction. Uh, natural number uh, has a starting point, zero, so you need to verify zero plus zero equals zero. Then, for any other natural number, N zero, if N zero plus zero remains the uh, uh, same, uh, 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 y y yes, uh, then uh, you will be asked to prove about the next natural number. The statement holds true for next natural number. The first, the first conclusion, the goal, is obvious because uh, zero plus anything will be the same. We define, define it that way. 
we use this tactic which proves automatic things. This is called an automatic proof. Then we are asked to prove this thing. Uh, these are assumptions, okay? We have uh, two assumptions. N0 is an uh, assumption that N0 is a natural number. And this is an induction assumption. We move those things uh, above. Okay, we are uh, using these assumptions, we are asked to prove this one. How do we prove it? Uh, we rewrite. We rewrite uh, this guy. These, these, uh, these two mathematical expressions are equivalent. Uh, I, I will not try to explain. Equality, equivalent means equality holds between the two expressions. That's something uh, difficult to explain. Uh, uh, we replace we replace this one by this one. Okay, this is the uh, uh, most tricky part of the proof. Well, uh, in usual mathematical terms, we, this is ob ob of course obvious. M plus one plus zero is equal to M plus zero plus one. We exchange uh, zero and one using commutativity and associativity of uh, uh, subtract uh, uh, addition of uh, natural numbers. So the sub goal is rewritten using uh, this command and this by using this one okay m plus zero equals m so we insert the, this assumption into the goal we get this assumption the left hand side appears to be exactly to the right, right hand side so we this is obvious okay so this is proved this is a formal mathematical proof by Koch and Koch is called a theorem prover there are many popular theorem provers in computer science uh, and Koch is one of the popular one okay so we have uh, we okay and th this is just the things that I proved and this is a theorem stored in the computer. We proved plus zero. We, I named it the theorem, I just proved uh, plus zero. And this is the meaning of the theorem. And I can re reuse it as a lemma or theorem to prove other things. Okay, this is mass data. A very small mathematical data. How can we do statistic analysis? Okay, uh, I tried to uh, spend some time to describe what uh, I mean by formalization of uh, mathematical sciences. Uh, it's a very painful process of uh, even proving some simple mathematical facts, but uh, uh, there are uh, uh, many works I will uh, refer to later. Uh, there are many libraries uh, already developed to help you to prove things fa uh, much faster. Okay, then I will give you very vague pictures about different kinds of uh, mathematical uh, of data about mathematical sciences. So look at these uh, slides, uh, not too serious. Okay. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, formally proved a very big theorem in mathematical sciences called the four color theorem which uh, was proved uh, in formally proved in 2005 uh, by Koch okay this is a theorem four color theorem and uh, this is the proof exact exact means automatic which uses various kinds of lemmas uh, how, how long is the proof the proof consists of uh, 60,000 lines and uh, a huge amount of lemmas and definitions are involved. Uh, a scientist, a team of uh, about uh, 10 researchers spend about uh, 
uh, 10 years to prove this one. This is another theorem, a very famous theorem in algebra called uh, Fate Thompson uh, theorem or the odd order theorem, which is very easy to state. It says that for a finite group having odd order, then it is solvable. And this is a SS reflect way of writing this theorem. It's, it's pr it, it was proved in 2000, and just a little while ago, 2012. Uh, this is the number of lines involved in the proof, and the number of definitions and the number of uh, lemmas prepared to prove this theorem. You can download uh, this, uh, the, the, this whole, whole stuff from the internet, but I don't encourage you to do so because <laughs> you need to uh, learn a lot more about uh, uh, type theory in order to st understand each line. It's not an efficient way of learning about uh, formal proof. These are, uh, each knot is a library, okay? Um, for, uh, I, I, maybe I can, okay. Using Macintosh, iMac, you can magnify it very easily, but you <laughs> cannot see. Uh, each, each is a, is a name of a library uh, in, the, in the years to develop, uh, to prove these various large mathematical uh, theorems. For, e for example, uh, Abelian probably is a library about uh, Abelian groups. And there are libraries about uh, natural numbers, of course. Okay. So these are part of the big mass data. All everything in the uh, installed in, in these libraries are checked by computer you can reuse it. If you still don't believe the things written here, then you should doubt about the, uh, the basic component of the Koch, of the Koch system, not the mathematicians or statisticians. Uh, another recent uh, big project which proved the Kepler conjecture uh, just proved uh, in August 2014, about one, uh, one year ago. Many 40 researchers involved in proving this theorem. And I just uh, uh, had a talk with uh, Professor Hagiwara, my colleague, and he returned from Washington DC uh, on an artificial intelligence uh, workshop. Uh, this, is a, this is a page borrowed from the proceeding. Uh, these guys uh, talked ab about a curve of uh, former proofs. Unfortunately, not in, in Koch, but in another uh, popular uh, theorem prover, Isabel, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, you can submit your proof like a journal article. It will be ref uh, refereed. Uh, and uh, you will assign, uh, 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 you will get uh, 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 cited as a, as a, as a usual uh, scientific article. Uh, the project starts from 2004, and these are various statistics about the, uh, the data size, okay? Uh, these are lines of the code developed around the years. And this uh, number of authors, how many researchers involved in, in, in this uh, project, and the number of articles, how many articles uh, have been submitted to, the, to, to this uh, website, and I cannot. Uh, Okay, in, in, anyway, this is, this is uh, big, big enough for any single, single 
uh, people, for any individual to try to, to understand the whole picture. Th these are mathematical theorems, facts, okay? Proved by computer. I will, I will talk about how to analyze those things later. These are data, but not in the usual way we understand the data. Data are not numerical figures here, nor pictures like fMRI. Professor Kim is, uh, was talking about in the conference. Mm -hmm. It's a mathematical theory. Proofs, lemmas, definitions, digitized. And then we write uh, articles in LaTeX, for example. Uh, again, we let's review uh, Gauss's formula. This, uh, this formula is written uh, in LaTeX, okay? We, we probably will import this like this LaTeX code. But in SS Reflect, we write it this way. So you can easily do an automatic translation by writing a computer program to turn your LaTeX article into mathematics. This is not mathematics. This is for type, type setting. Please understand, this is not mathematics. This is for typesetting, to, to let your formula appear to be beautiful. But this is mathematically understood by the computer. So, you can, so we have a large number of uh, mathematical articles written in latex code, so we can turn it into a mass data, if you wish. Uh, the word of uh, uh, R. Uh, we do simulation studies, I mentioned, and uh, uh, at least in my department, uh, my colleagues doing pure mathematics, they hate simulation. They don't believe it. Uh, for example, I gave you an example. Uh, we estimate a parameter, usually, uh, by doing maximi maximizing uh, the likelihood of function, but you, you like Bayesian, but Bayesian still uh, do basic computation by max, max, maximizing something or minimize something or doing, uh, doing expectation. You need to, to have a, a random, uh, to have a random number simulated from certain uh, hypothetical distributions, okay? Then you set out a likelihood of function you need a random a seed to, in order to repeat, okay, to, to repeat the simulation, simulation, to let others uh, to see they can have the same result if you use a seed. And this is, this is a, 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 a computer program for computing the maximum likelihood of uh, Laplace distribution. And this is our code. Okay. The theorem, I write it as a theorem, not a simulation. This, uh, I want the, 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 the R code to, to, do this, to guarantee that the maximum likelihood as the estimate computed this way, in exactly this way, will be within certain given error. Uh, can, can, you, can you guarantee this? If you can guarantee this, if you can prove, I not believe, you, if you can prove it, then mathematicians will accept it. Mathematicians accept it or not is not, a, not an important issue. It will be a, a rigorously guaranteed simulation. So, uh, if you have R code, then you will have a, a landscape of our mass data. So how to how to prove things written in our code? I will talk it about later. And then uh, the my main focus is uh, on the statistical analysis of the big mass data uh, written uh, arising in the various fields. 
first, uh, first challenge I, I will say is that it is not naive at all to quantify mathematical proofs. I give you a very simple example. There are almost uh, infinite ways of proving the same theorem. This is a theorem uh, called the Hilbert's axiom S, which says that we have uh, three propositions called A, B, C. If A holds, if A implies B, if A implies B implies B implies C, then C holds. You may say it's naive, but it's not naive at all. You, ne you need various logical rules to deduce this one. Uh, written, in, uh, written in the way in the Cook people can understand, it's usually written like this. This is an assumption. This is an assumption. This is the assumption, okay? So, given three assumptions, uh, talking in a, a more informal way, given the evidence of A and giving the evidence of A implies B and giving evidence of this sequence, then you will be guaranteed to have C. Uh, there are many, many ways of prove this. I'm, I'm, I won't be able to talk about uh, the, this proof. This, anyway, this is the proof. Okay, just look at the, the, the curious, curious ways of proving this. This is proved. So, uh, you can accept this theorem. How to digitize this? If you have a smart way of digitize this one, then wait a, wait a moment, you have another way to prove it. You give the hypothesis here, okay? Uh, no hypothesis is written here. These are three propositions. The hypothesis are embedded in the theorem. Okay, given three hypotheses, you can write the proof in much shorter code. And this is a theorem. But they, they prove the same mathematical facts. They should be equivalent. And we have uh, the, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth way of proving the same theorem. They should be equivalent, but how to digitize them? This, this is not easy. Okay, these are, are computer uh, computer memory, uh, com uh, com com these are computer output of each of the theorem we just proved. So the first difficulty is how to, how to numerically uh, quantify the proofs. There are some very limited uh, research on pattern recognition on, of the mathematical theorems and the proofs. Uh, they digitize, they try to code the each tactic we, I, we have seen a little while ago, the induction, rewrite, or move or something uh, as uh, one variable. And uh, they use other variables, for example, is it uh, uh, a type or is it a proposition or other things? Uh, they use other information. Is a lemma uh, referred to in the proof, or I is there any hypothesis uh, referred to in the proof? They use it as another uh, variable. Uh, or equality is required? Yes or no? So there are many, many ways of uh, uh, to doing this kind of uh, 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 digitization. And th these guys, uh, okay, from Ireland, I think. Uh, I did not, I forgot to put the reference here. They just published, the, uh, ah, yes, these, these guys uh, from, uh, from, from UK, I think. Uh, they, they, they tried to do this kind of thing. They, it is naive, but a first step, it's uh, 
not enough at all, but it's the first step towards uh, pattern recognition of mathematical proofs. For example, in the, among the large libraries I just showed you a little while ago, they were able to uh, group these three theorems together uh, by using uh, several thousands of lemmas to collect these same lemmas into the same, same group. So these are the theorems. Because, you know, the ways of proving uh, these lemmas are very, very similar. But I showed you, you can artificially make additional complication into the proof to achieve the same result. So there are a long, long way to go to uh, do pattern recognition in this area. Uh, I probably won't talk about uh, this part. This is a formalization of uh, this is, I know uh, all of you are from statistic background, so you're probably more interested in, in this part. This is on conditional inference, uh, conditional independence. I have been studying for quite some time. I did a little bit of algebra on this uh, area and made some formalization. I just quickly show you uh, what I did, not, not talking about the details. I will talk about it uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning uh, in the conference. So the second part, uh, this part concerns about formalization of uh, statistic sciences. For example, how to formalize the law of large numbers, how to formalize the most important, another theorem, the central limit theorem. I let my graduate students to, con to consider it about as they all gave up. It's, uh, no, we, we can't do, do that within two or three years. <laughs> so if you can't, so please study conditional inference. <laughs> this is much, much easier. Uh, correlation does not imply causation. I won't talk about it. You know, you know more than me than I do, I think. And uh, okay, I won't talk about this either. Uh, we had a nice lecture on Markov chain. This is a Markov chain in the traditional sense. Okay. Okay, Let, let's say something about Markov chain. Okay. We have uh, three uh, random variables. Suppose they are to be, con they, they are continuous to make things easier. Uh, by definition, what do, do I mean by Markov chain in this situation? I assume uh, three conditional uh, independence relations. Uh, uh, given x2, uh, uh, 1 and 3 is independent, uh, given 1, uh, given, sorry, uh, given x3, okay, uh, x4 is separated from 1, 2, uh, something like that. And uh, from this, we, are, we can deduce, for example, the nearest neighbor property, uh, which says, Given x2 and x, x4, uh, the neighbors, uh, x3, okay, x3 will be independent uh, of 1 and 5. We, uh, we can prove it in 5 minutes, probably in 10 minutes, uh, using uh, the the machineries of uh, probability density functions and the definition of conditional uh, independence. But how to prove it by computer? Uh, more generally, if I refer to a set, of, uh, a set of conditional independence as a model, and we have a conjecture, we have another set of uh, uh, conditional independence, how can we deduce one model from another model? I was interested in Grabner basis, uh, but I failed to produce any useful results along that lines. So I tried my own idea. This is uh, uh, 
Kane algebra, I will talk it, uh, it about it uh, tomorrow. Uh, dot means product. Uh, the pi like something is a probability density function, abs algebraic abstraction of density functions. The product of density functions is commutative, associative, and we have a, a left unit. Uh, probability density function can be divided. And this corresponds to the conditional uh, density function. So all these are some basic properties abstracted from probability density functions which are supposed to be useful for doing conditional independence. And these are some uh, SS reflect code corresponding to these uh, axioms. Don't look at, uh, at it into, uh, into the details of these uh, lines. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, this is a this you may you may disagree. This is not a Bayes theorem. Okay, let's call it a Bayes-like theorem. Okay, uh, in King algebra, you can prove everything in in terms of equality. Uh, you can prove uh, equality such as uh, equation eight by using the axiom I just uh, showed you a little uh, in the previous slides uh, to do an informal proof. This is the informal proof. And this is a formal proof in SS Reflect. Okay, uh, I'm running out of my time. I don't think I should go to too much the details. Uh, return to statistics uh, a little bit. Uh, this is a density function of the uh, lo logistic, of the logistic distribution. Okay, uh, indexed by one location parameter theta, and we are interested in uh, we are interested in estimating the location. This is a very usual. I think I'm not good at writing program. I think this is a very usual, or maybe say to typical R program for uh, producing. Is the maximum likely estimated we're using non-linear minimizer to do the computation. Is it trustable? Is the problem. The hypothetical value is zero and using uh, 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 the seeds uh, pi might pi it uh, some by one uh, 10,000 perhaps then you will get the maximum likelihood estimated And this was the slide I showed you uh, previously. I want to prove that this, this computer output is reliable in the sense that it will satisfy this property. How can I do it? Of course, I'm not able to uh, explain the, uh, the detail of how to digitize how to this computer pro program, but I do give a uh, I use several seconds to explain. There are some uh, research on how to uh, how to uh, mathematically uh, analyze a computer program. <coughs> uh, these are called whole logic. They put each small part of a computer program using various rules and to make a small piece into a large picture. Okay. This, uh, this as a whole is a big name in computer science. Uh, this is very interesting, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have time. I think to to show you how to how to verify a computer computer program. I, I, I copied copied this copied this program called Simplify uh, to show you Simplify is a verified program. Simplify. Is, uh, which simplifies an algebraic expression involving the addition of natural numbers, it will simplify so that all the zeros will be deleted. And the left-hand side is still equivalent to the right-hand side. You can 
writes a computer program, I, for, I, I omit about the details. And this is a proof of the computer program. I want to do things uh, in our program for doing statistical simulation. It's not naive. We use various kind of uh, uh, language we create to in the toy example. And these are ongoing studies on how to formalize randomness in statistics or in probability. The fundamental, the utmost important concept in statistics and probability theory is a randomness probably. How to formalize that concept? This is a paper published by a French professor uh, working in Ingrid, I, I wrote it here. But uh, it, uh, it's, uh, the paper is difficult, to, difficult for me to understand. And I, uh, I do think it's still very uh, naive. And we have a lot of uh, fun in this area. And these are some of our ongoing studies. And uh, I hope I will, in my per I personally will enjoy this field in the next 10 or 15 years while I'm still keeping an eye on in mainstream. This is not a mainstream statistics, but it, it uh, has many. Uh, possibilities and challenges. It's very, very new, even for mathematicians, at least in Japan. I talked about these things to my co colleagues, mathematicians. Some of them uh, are aware about it, but most of them are ignorant about uh, the formalization of mathematics. But, uh, but in Princeton, uh, the, uh, uh, some well-known uh, figures in mathematics, they are uh, doing things, they are trying to d formalize their own theories. Uh, n they are not statistician in theories uh, in, in, in Coke in, or other language. It's a n new tradition. And I think it may be very promising. Okay, thank you very much for your time.